Welcome to the Acrylic Portrait Painting Challenge Masterclass, lesson number two, sketching your portrait so that you can paint with confidence. I'm excited you're here and we're diving into one of the most important parts of the portrait painting process, sketching your portrait. Uh, we need to build a foundation at this stage and it's so important to build up a portrait successfully just like a house where you have your foundation in place and then you start putting up the structure of the, the wood beams, the studs, and then after that you go and put in plumbing and different things. Everything has to be done sequentially and I'm gonna teach you how to do this step by step. Now sketching doesn't have to be difficult. If we break it down into simple um, bite-sized pieces, getting that grid set up, which is what we did in our last lesson, lesson number one, um, putting in the outlines of the sketch and then following up with detail, a three-step process. It's gonna make it so much easier. When you get those accurate proportions rendered onto your canvas, you get the details put down in advance, you'll have basically a roadmap to follow for your painting. And then it's just a matter of putting in those layers and those values and those colors. And of course, I'm gonna show you how to do all of this step by step. So thank you so much for going on this journey with me and so many other artists. It's gonna be an excited time and you can paint a portrait too. If you have the desire to do it, um, God has given you that talent. It's actually inside you. You just need somebody to show you how to do it. And that's what I'm here for. I'm here to serve you and help you to be able to paint a portrait, maybe for the first time, or maybe you've struggled with it in the past, but this will be the time that you'll be able to paint a portrait that you can be proud of. All right, so uh, take this portrait painting challenge with me. If you haven't signed up yet, you can do that. It's completely free to sign up. You'll get access to these masterclass lessons, all eight of them. And to sign up, just go to realisticacrylic.com forward slash acrylic dash portrait dash painting dash challenge. Now, when you sign up, I'll also give you the welcome kit, which includes your supplies list. You'll know exactly what to shop for to be able to paint with us. Paints, the brushes, the canvas, everything you need. It's all on the list. You can print that out. And you'll also get the gridded reference photo. Um, so that will be able to prepare you to create the grid on your canvas and sketch along with us. You'll get the image without the grid. You can put that on your Kindle or your device like I have here. You can print it out, whatever you need to do. And you also get the palette layout guide so you know where to put your paints on your palette so that they don't get muddy and it's so much easier and less frustrating to mix your skin tones and other colors. Now in this case, this is gonna be a monochromatic painting, a black and white. So we're not gonna to have to worry about skin tones, uh, just values. And I'll help you how to do that as well. All right, so let's dive in here before we actually begin the process of sketching with a word of prayer. I would like to bless you as you work on this, por this portrait. Um, I know that I need God's help. Without him, I can do nothing. With him, I can do all things. I'm gonna ask a blessing on you. Father, I ask a blessing on the artists watching this class. I pray that you would enable them, give them the sense of confidence that they can paint a portrait they can be proud of. They can paint a portrait with your help and with that talent that you've given them. So Lord, I just ask a blessing on each and every artist watching this. I pray you'd encourage them. I pray that you would guide them step by step as they begin sketching and they'd be able to see things in the reference image and transfer it onto the canvas to render what they see. And as they get into the painting process, they would uh, know how to mix those different skin tones, or I should say the different shades of gray that we'll be mixing on the palette and that you would help me to be able to guide them in this process. And Lord, we just want to do this for your glory. We give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, let's get started. We're going to first begin here with the sketch. And I have the reference image here. Again, that's in your welcome kit. So when you sign up, that'll all be sent to you via email. You can download it. Uh, we have the reference image here uh, with a two-inch grid overlay and that corresponds with our grid. Again, that was in lesson one, so I'll have a link for that. If you miss lesson one, you can catch up, no worries. And uh, so we'll have the, the two inch grid here with a one inch grid inset in the interior. And so with that, then uh, you'll be able to 
easily follow along without getting overwhelmed with so many grid lines. That'll make it a lot easier. And then we're going to um, get some of the detail on the interior with the, the one inch grid. Okay, so we have that combination of the two inch grid with that one inch inset. It's perfect. I think it's going to work super, super well. Uh, it's the best of both worlds for this process. All right, so you're going to want to grab a uh, dark gray or black colored pencil. Uh, it's good if you can use Prismacolor. If you don't have Prismacolor, just make sure it's not a water, watercolor, excuse me, a watercolor colored pencil because that's something that could mix with water when you're applying matte medium and trying to seal it and you might have some issues with the, the, the pigment, the color actually bleeding all over your canvas. So make sure that it is a uh, Prismacolor or a high quality brand colored pencil. This is a 90% gray, so it's almost black. But if you have black, that, that'll be just as good. You also want to have a white eraser. So I have this white kind of soft eraser. They work really well. Um, there's electric erasers you can use too. Um, but either way, this will enable you to start doing the sketch. Now the first step of the sketch is just to get our bearings on what's going on. Look at the reference image. You always want to start it off well and make sure that you have your lines in the right place. I've actually got thrown off by this a couple of times. And we're just going to um, start in the upper left corner. I'm going to begin with the curtain that we see in the image. And I like to start in the upper left and kind of work my way down from there. So you want to see this in a sense as, as fractions. You know, we're just basically getting the contours. We don't have to get super complex with this, but we're going to bring this down to, oh, about three squares down. And then this is where the man's shoulder is. And again, I love this image here. It's of a man praying. And this is something that I've really felt God has called me to do is to paint images of people praying. And I'm so glad that so many students in our group chose this image. Uh, it's a special image for me. It's actually where I posed um, for a painting I did called Smoldering Wick several years ago. And it's one of my favorite paintings I've done uh, where a man is going through rough times and uh, he feels the encouragement uh, coming from God as he reads his Bible and he contemplates and prays. Um, so this is a really special image for me and I'm just so thrilled to be able to teach you how to paint this portrait. Well, let's continue on. Uh, we're going to bring the shoulder down and this should hit, oh, I suppose maybe almost at the halfway point. It probably should be brought out just a little wider than what I have. So I'm going to erase it here. I don't always do that this early on in the process, but here I think I will erase it. Now, ideally, you'll want to have your grid line sealed in with some matte medium and gesso. That does make it a lot easier to be able to erase on the canvas, too. So just something to keep in mind. All right, so we bring this down. We get some of these lines to converge at the right place. Here's the contours of his back. Let's just zoom in a little bit so you really can see what's going on here. All right, there we go. And we're going to show the bottom part of his vest. We have the chair. We're going to kind of get that in fairly loose. I don't want to over detail it. Just want to get kind of a sense of the, the angle of the lines here. And then we've got the top part of the post and that part of the chair. So I'm just going to keep my lines fairly loose. Notice how I'm holding my pencil more at the end. I'm not holding it down here like I would if I were writing a letter or writing in a card. No, I'm holding it at the tip and that allows me to get a little more loose lines as I'm sketching. And that's what we want at this stage. We don't want it to be too tight. Uh, we just want to keep things fairly loose, which allows us then to adjust. If you have any lines that are kind of off kilter, they're not quite going where you want them to go, it's okay because when you're keeping it loose, you can uh, define the line by darkening the areas that are correct. 
But we don't even need to do that yet at this stage. We just need to really kind of loosely block this in. Um, so let's continue on here. We have that outside edge of the curtain. I'm gonna continue this up. I'm looking at fractions. I, I wanna see where the line intersects. And I say this intersects at maybe about two fifths of the way from the edge, this vertical line, and then running along the horizontal line uh, about two fifths of the way over. So always kind of ask yourself that, but don't make it so scientific that you're actually measuring it or using a ruler. Just keep it kind of loose and let these grid lines just be as a guideline for you and kind of get the sense that you're doing it almost, almost freehand with the addition of these guidelines here. Okay, so we're going to now get into this inset with the one inch squares and we're starting to block in a little bit of his head structure. And we look at the top of the head and it goes maybe about a quarter from the top. So we're just gonna keep some kind of simple angles here. Now we're getting into a portion of the head and we have the skull structure and the eyebrow ridge. I'm just gonna put in a quick line for that. We've got the nose coming down about a third of the way. I'm gonna move this over just a bit, but you can see what's happening here in the reference photo where these lines are converging. And you'll be able to get a sense for that in your own uh, portrait as well. Make sure you have your sharpener on hand. You're gonna to need to keep your pencil at really sharp. Can you use a graphite pencil, you might be asking. Yes, you can, it just tends to smear more and it doesn't erase quite as well. But uh, I think with this slightly darker lead, this might be a little more difficult to erase than some of the other ones I've used that are more sepia tone. But we'll just have to get a, a sense and see how it works. All right, so I'm getting the, the collar here and I want to basically show the bottom part of the neck and then as it meets the hand, I wanna loosely portray the hand, but not too loosely. I mean, I have to be able to tell that this is a thumb here and then we have the fingers and then um, this is part of the where the hand meets the wrist and we have an angle here and this is gonna intersect that grid line. And then we've got this line right here, this is part of the wrist that comes out and it's going to intersect that part. Now we have the two hands clasped together and we have a nice highlight there, but I'm not gonna be so concerned about getting that. I just wanna now block in the form of those fingers. I'm gonna zoom in even more so you can really see what we're doing here. Okay, so we've got this sense right here of the, the index finger, middle finger, ring finger, pinky finger. I'm just putting in a couple of quick angles for that. Outside edge of the hand. It's possible I have it out a little too far, but that should be good at this point for what we're doing. Let's erase that a little bit. All right, and then we'll bring the wrist down. And now we're going into the clothing below, and I'll just zoom this down a bit so we can see that. So we have the elbow, and I'm gonna go back to that other arm, and I want to just get in the cuff of the sleeve. Bring that down to about here. It's got a rounded edge. And then we're gonna bring this angle up here on the arm and just try to loosely block that in, just get a few points. Now, if we didn't have, if we didn't have these grid lines, you'd be going even looser than this on the sketch, but the grid line kind of keeps, keeps things from getting out of control, keeps your proportions nice and accurate, but it is nice to do some freehand sketching once in a while and build up those muscles, so to speak as well. But gridding is a nice way to really still use your proportional muscles, so to speak, um, 
which when you're doing tracing, it doesn't quite have that same effect. It doesn't really enable you to, to see proportions as accurately and build up those skills. I have nothing against tracing, by the way. I think it's just a tool in your toolbox, but it, gridding is kind of halfway between tracing and freehand, in my opinion. It's gonna race this year. It's get a little bit off. Okay, and we're going to just bring this up a little bit. And then, let's see, we're going to get the line here for the clothing. And then now we have the top part of this table. We'll get the angle described for that. And let's just make sure we can see that. That's going to meet about here. Just You don't need to use a ruler for this. It can be somewhat loose. I mean, you, you'll be able to get it described later. And it's nice to actually be able to, to draw a straight line without a ruler when you have to. Unless you're doing like a lot of architectural drawings and buildings and stuff, then you might want to have a ruler. But for this table, I think it's just kind of nice if you can just do it freehand. If you feel you need a ruler, though, that's not a big deal. I'm not going to get mad. <laughs> I just want to help you to do the best portrait you can. And if you come up with some little ways of doing it that work for you, more power to you. I just, I'm happy about that. Okay, we're going to keep this going. And I want to make sure that I've got this table going as far as it should. It, it, let's see, we've got it going all the way to here. So this, this will be important because it's easy to get lost on this process and have it go too far. One, two, yeah, one, two, three from the edge. So this actually is where that line should meet. So I just want to make sure we've got that meeting in the right place. And then we've got these lines intersecting here and here. And I probably should move this over a bit so you can see it. So it's going up, up and away. There we go, just like that. Now let's kind of move back over to his arms and get that bottom area of where his elbows meet the table. And somewhere right about here and right there is what I'm seeing. And then we want to get the Bible below and we'll just at an angle for that. It comes up right about there, I think. And there's a little bit of a curvature there. And there. I just want to make sure I've got these angles correct. Yeah, this really would come out to about this point. This is maybe just a bit lower. So we're getting the curvature of those pages in there. Move this down a little bit. And that Bible is kind of almost going over his, well, part of it is going over his elbow area. So here it's actually intersecting, and that's what we call two different objects. And it's nice for the sense of realism to make sure you have objects in the foreground uh, decisively cropping off objects that are behind them. And in this case, that would be his elbow. So if you can get that sense in there, that's going to be great. So this can go down and it, it's going to meet that grid in the corner, that inset there. And then we've got, let's see, we got to establish the bottom edge of this Bible. That's an important line. And it's going to be right about here from what I could see. And it's just at about the point of his elbow. We'll meet that downward. And then it meets up at about the halfway point on these grid lines. There's a little bit of a shadow too, so that's part of the way the object looks. It's, it's not actually just the edge of the Bible, it's also the shadow that it casts on the table. This line here is going to come up a bit higher. Yeah, and this is where we actually have like the, the cover of it, the leather part. And then that kind of flows around like that. There's a curved part of the page. Let's zoom in a little bit further so you can really can see what's happening here. Curved part of the page that flows in like that. 
and uh, there we go. And then we add a little bit of extra detail right there to show the width of the pages. All right, that's good. Now, uh, let's see, at this stage, let's get the other side of that table, and that comes up to about this point. So we count up one, two, and then we have the inset grid, three, four. So we have these two large squares on the bottom here, one, two, and then one, two on the smaller ones, on the one inch squares. And that's where we're gonna have the top of that table. So that's gonna almost meet at the top. And in fact, I think it actually does. Let's just erase this. Yeah, it does actually meet up there. So we're gonna bring this down. And let's see, that's gonna go at a nice angle. Let's, let's plot out where the line should converge. And over here, this is the edge where it converges and it meets up. There's actually a kerosene can. I'm gonna zoom out just a bit so you can see that. So it meets up right here, uh, one, two, three, and then from this line going down just a bit to maybe about a third of the way, yeah, about a third of the way down from this top line. And we've got the kerosene can right here. And really what will help you in sketching is to look not just at the positive shapes, but the negative shapes of what's left behind. Let me just show you on the reference photo. Just move it over here and zoom it way in. What will help you in getting an accurate sense of proportion is looking not just at the positive shapes of the objects themselves, but look at the negative shapes of what's left behind. For example, where this kerosene can meets up with this grid line, this grid line, and that grid line. It creates a rectangular shape. And if you can observe that shape and say, okay, that shape is kind of long and skinny, but not too skinny, it's definitely not square. If you can see that shape as well, that's gonna help you to really plot out where to put that kerosene can um, and all other parts really of the image. You know, for example, so when I'm looking at um, the, the wrist here, well, let's just zoom in a little further. I'm looking at his wrist and part of the sleeve. I'm looking at that little triangle. See that little triangle right there that's left where these intersect? So I'm not just looking only at the shape of his arm, but I'm looking at that little triangle and wanting to see that that looks the same on my sketch. All right, so those kinds of things, those benchmarks will really, really help you in this process. Uh, but let's go back and we'll have to zoom out a bit so you can see what's going on. And let's get back over to that kerosene can that we were sketching in. We'll just zoom out a bit more. And again, so this is that line we're looking for. And want to make sure that we have these proportions accurate, probably somewhere about here. This can come up a little bit. And then we've got uh, the top right there. And that'll be good. And then this can come down. This can actually goes all the way down to here until it hits this tray. And what's interesting is that tray that we're sketching is actually the servant's tray, the butler's tray. And they would have their wick trimmer in there. They'd have a, a piece of cloth and they'd have a little um, aluminum or metal tray that would hold the ashes and pieces from the wick as they trimmed it. And so, I just did a little bit of research to make sure I got those things accurate because we're, we're rendering kind of a Victorian era, era picture here. All right, so this is the tray, the, the servant's tray that we're rendering. And I'll just make sure I show the whole thing. So it comes down to about here. And there's the edge. Actually, we'd have little handles in it so they could pick it up. And we have the, the cloth here. I'm gonna let that cloth intersect. It's got a little fold in it. I don't have to put in too much detail. Part of the cloth is gonna be cropping off the bottom of the kerosene can. And we can get a little bit of the roundness of that form, but I don't wanna to do too much with that. I'm still 
basically trying to get in the outlines. All right, so now let's get in that lamp. Uh, that's important. Sharpen my pencil here, and so there's a doily below the, the lamp, that's what it rests on, and we're gonna render that. And that, let's see, where does that go? That's top part of it goes to about the halfway point of this grid, and then the left edge just touches over. It's gonna intersect, and it's gonna go past the halfway point right there. Let's zoom in a little bit and see it. And then we've got the lamp itself, which the bottom edge now, don't make the mistake of putting it right in the middle. There's gonna be more width on the left and the right side, and the bottom edge of that lamp, there'll be less space below the bottom edge uh, to the edge of the doily because you're seeing this part foreshortened, but this part you're seeing the true width of it here. So I hope that makes sense. Less space here, more space here. And we will get this lamp to flow up and just try to capture the overall sense of it. And I guess it exceeds this grid line, so we need to make sure we get that true width in there. And then we've got the basin, we've got the, the burner part on the top. There we go maybe about there, and then we have the, the chimney. And the chimney actually has a straight part and then it kind of flows out from there. Goes up to the top, and let's see, this top part of the chimney would go to about there. It's gonna exceed the grid line a little bit. Just want to make sure we have that rounded off as it should be. The burner is kind of a rounded part. And uh, yeah, I think that's about right. It looks maybe a little wide, but um, I just want to follow what I see. Yeah, it does come out a little too far on that left hand side, according to how I've sketched it here. So I'm going to have to erase this. Just make sure that I don't have it coming out too far. It's about at the, more at the halfway point. So we'll just try to taper that in a little bit more on this side here. More at the halfway point, okay. All right, so we get the shape of that base in there. Now remember, the sketch does not have to look like a finished drawing. We just need to get the overall sense of the contours and the placement of everything. So I don't want to overdo this, but it's very tempting to do because I used to draw a lot before I actually did um, portrait painting. All right, now let's go back to the face and let's we'll see if we can block in just a little bit more right here and get in the ears really loosely. And a little bit of the, the hair, the overall structure of the hair, just block that in. And then we'll get in a little bit of the contour of the clothing. And we'll try to also sketch in this lighting structure and that's gonna be important to get that, those distinctions blocked off right away. We do need to get the interior of the arm so I want to show this other side of his arm and his wrist here and just leave a little bit of room for the wrinkles to go on. And we have this edge of his wrist and there's that. And then we've got a little bit of shading there. We can just start that. You see maybe a little bit of his pants down there but not much, it's, just, it's only just suggested at the bottom. Okay, now let's, uh, let's do the other side of the curtain and the painting or map on the wall and that will finish this portion of the lesson. Now we're going to move up here. I'm just gonna zoom out a little bit. And what we wanna do is show this other side of the curtain, which flows out at about this point. We'll just make a couple of quick lines for that. There's their little gap. It's maybe about a quarter of the way from the edge of this grid line. 
an eighth at this point, then it intersects down at this grid line here, and that's this, this subset one, two, and then, so you have one line, two lines, and then this uh, one inch. All right, so you'll see where that intersects as you look at your, at your image, your reference image. This is gonna flow down right there and there. You don't want the lines to be too straight. They have a little bit of an angle to them. And then we have the edge of the picture frame and there's a shadow on it and we want to see that whole thing as one element. So really this whole thing can just be one element and the actual edge can be that shadow. <clears throat> so when we're drawing it out, let's see where the shadow falls and we have one, two, three and it falls at about this point. And this is gonna go down here And it's going to go to about that point right there. Yeah, I think the shadow falls at about a third of the way over from the edge. And then we have the part of the frame. And uh, <laughs> I made a little mistake here. Yeah, I put this in the wrong spot. I just noticed it should be actually to the left of that, to the left of the lamp. Let's just erase that. Okay, let's try that again. It's actually going to be over here. I'm sorry, I had my mind on something else. <laughs> you ever do that when you're working on artwork and you're just thinking about something else and then you lose track of where you are? That's, that's what I did right here. But that's okay. Um, currently, as I'm working on this, we just have some different things that are going on in our in our home here, like a stove that we're trying to get fixed that hasn't been fixed for a few months. And um, yeah, I just got to get my focus back on what I'm doing here, and I will. Okay, so this shadow uh, goes up to the top, and it's going to be yeah about a third of the way over from this left line. And then we're going to get the actual edge of the picture frame right there. And this will come down. And let's see, am I getting that in the right place? No, no, I still, I have the vertical angles right, but I just cropped this off a little too short. I'll get it. Yeah, so this actually is gonna come down to this point here. Yeah, because I'm just noticing as I look at it where it is in relationship to the lamp, and that's kind of my be my benchmark. So as we count down, we have one, two, three, and it really hits this third um, this third line here, and that's that uh, two inch grid. So we have the one square, the second square, third square. It comes down right above that that uh, line there for these two inch grids. And then we're going to just continue this line and it's going to intersect as we get to that point over there. So at this third grid line, it will intersect. And then we want to put in the inside part of it and that can go up a little higher. And then this can come down a bit like that. And we'll just have this kind of angle down that way towards the edge. All right, and then up here, we're going to add a little bit of the interior of this map. So we're getting, this is the inset here of the map. And this can go maybe at about the halfway point. And I don't want to get too inundated with the details right now. Um, but we do have, let's see, this gap and then this is going to come to about this point. I just want to put in one more major line for this. And then the round part of that map on the top. And that's going to be intersecting right here. It's going to flow out to about the halfway point of this grid. And it'll flow down to about there. Let's see, yeah, and it actually is gonna come up to about here. 
Okay, just want to make sure I have that accurate. All right, so at this stage here, um, the sketch, let's see, oh, one last thing I want to do is let me just complete this contour for the table behind the lap. Yeah, I'll just complete that contour. All right. So now we have the major forms more or less blocked in. This is where we're at in the sketch. And I think just so that this lesson doesn't get too incredibly long, I'm going to break this up into two, possibly three parts, depending on how long it takes to do some of the shading and details. Um, but this is the initial block in of the sketch, just getting in the simple forms. And I'm going to just post this video like this because it'll be important, I think, for you to see this in steps. Also to make sure that we have this video um, not getting too incredibly long. So it just makes it harder on YouTube for watch time and actually to upload it. Let's leave this right here. So if you get it to this stage where you have everything kind of loosely blocked in and it looks similar to what I have um, here, that'll be good. We didn't get the glasses sketched in yet, but that's okay. That's almost kind of a, a really detailed part of it. We'll do that as we get into the other parts uh, coming up in the, the future lessons here for the sketching stage. But I, again, I hope to break this into uh, two to three parts. So that's my goal here. Um, I want to basically leave it off at this point and say thank you so much for watching this. If you have any questions, let me know. Um, if you want to leave a comment on this video, your thoughts for me, uh, what you like about it, how it could be improved, and, and also just if you have any questions in general on this process. I'd really like to hear um, how I can help you to look at that reference image and break down those shapes into simple lines that you can render on your canvas and i'm just happy here to serve you uh, to help you paint a portrait you can be proud of all right so like this video subscribe uh, go ahead and get plugged into the challenge realisticacrylic.com i have the link here in the description uh, in the comments as well you can go ahead and sign up for the challenge and we'd love to have you take part in it but for now i'm going to say thanks for watching this video god bless and we'll talk to you soon